at the age of 15 or something, convinced my parents to rent a drum kit. And uh, we brought it back from Long McQuaid and put it in the garage. And I played for two hours. And I came out of the garage. And both neighbors were standing talking to my parents at the end of the garage, at the end of the driveway. And the drum kit went back the next day. It just was not happening. So then I started playing hand percussion, but I was playing guitar a lot. So I had detuned the bottom guitar strings to DAD, so I had a nice drone, and then I would play melody on the top strings. And my neighbor in Kensington said, you should listen to some Indian music. And so I went to Sam the Record Man uh, upstairs to the world music section, and there was a, you know, the Ravi Shankar section. And the guy had like 15 albums, and I was like, what? Who is this guy? I've never heard of him. So I bought a Deutsch Grammophone compilation cassette, and there was an Alaraka tabla solo on it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, the sitar stuff is really cool, but what is that? And my neighbor said, oh, that's tabla. I know a guy who, my, te my vocal teacher studies with a guy who teaches that. So I started taking classes, and I just sort of never stopped. And it was pretty clear to me, like within weeks of starting, that this is something I can do for the rest of my life and really never reach the end of it, because it's such a vast subject. It was clear to me that I was standing on the edge of an ocean. Because I never went to school formally, where if I went to school for percussion, say at U of T or York or something, I would have to learn all these other instruments. But because I chose to take the traditional route, tabla players in India don't play a bunch of other instruments. Maybe they play dolok or something, but you just play one instrument. So that's the path I took for better or worse. You know, some days it's the better choice, some days it's the worst choice. <laughs> layers of things. I think of tabla in a very layered thing, even though you think of it in a linear pattern as you're producing the stuff, I hear it in layers. So I'm very interested in that layered um, uh, effect that percussion, like a drummer, you know, a kit player, you've got a hi-hat pattern, you've got a kick pattern, and how all those things fit together I think really appeals to me. I really like accompanying classical music because it's very, very meditative and I do like that role as an accompanist um, of, of supporting someone and creating music on the fly but you're both aware of the, the heavy rules and traditions around the thing. I mean it's so exciting to when magic happens in, in those situations. It's like wow. I really like playing fusion work because it gives me a chance to be more expressive as an individual uh, as an individual artist in what I think we might call the Western sense of individuality, which is doing something completely original. A tabla solo takes more planning, but I can go and play a fusion concert or a, 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 a company as a, uh, a classical artist. You know, I, we could leave now and I could go and do either one of those shows, but to go and do a tabla solo, I need a month or so of prep to really design it out and plan it and get the music in my fingers, in my brain, and stuff like that.
The nature of tabla improvisation, I think, is quite different from a lot of other improvisation in terms of solo, uh, solo improvisation. So if you have something like a kaida, uh, a kaida is basically a very, very stringent set of rules that you have to abide by. You have the strokes you start out with in the theme, the rhythmic sort of seed of the thing, and you can break those up into different parts and components, but you have to break them on the phrases and repeat parts of the phrases. You can't introduce any other strokes into it. Um, you have to stay within the tala and everything you do with the open bass strokes, you have to do again with the closed bass strokes, the buddy Kali concept. So there's a huge number of rules around that. And while that seems like it might stifle creativity, it actually uh, encourages it because you're like, well, you know, it's like solving a puzzle. Well, how can I do this? And, and is that musical? There's an infinite number of variations you can make on any rhythmic phrase, but only some of them are musical. So you, you know, there's an aesthetic thing. So the improv is, for me, you know, I find that quite interesting. For me to sit down and do like a free impar improv on tabla is just not the way my brain is wired. I'm much more interested in how can I improvise within this structure. I did photography in high school. Um, I actually graduated with three photography courses um, in my last year, so I really learned quite a lot about photography from uh, my high school teacher Peter Moore um, and uh, so but that was always a sort of a background thing that I did I didn't have a you know a, I didn't even have a DSLR I just had point and shoots and I shot and stuff like that this is before of course your phone was a great camera I started doing video work because auto rickshaw needed video um, and we couldn't afford to hire people to do it so the first project I did we actually did hire two cameramen but then uh, the band bought me a copy of Final Cut and I just learned how to cut I was like how hard can it be there's two cameras you just cut back and forth I think about music quite visually so I really enjoy editing video to music because I think there's all sorts of you know I find an infinite number of points where you can you can edit it when I'm shooting compositionally there's you know sense of balance it's like oh I can compose it like this or slightly alter it here and it's still in balance and this constant flow that I think as a musician you're how do how am I feeding into the other parts um, you get used to doing so yeah video and music are pretty much inseparable to me I'm not really interested in going and um, doing corporate video you know for a for a business or anything that's not music related to be honest with you video and music are totally intertwined to me <laughs> How do people react to me as a, I guess, as a white tabla player? 99.999% um, uh, of the time it's totally positive and uh, uh, people are often, um, you know, really happy that I've decided to take up an instrument and to carry the tradition because I do play quite traditionally often when people are hearing me. They're super excited and who did you learn from and why are you learning this instrument? and um, uh, and, you know, I've been invited to play tabla solos in India uh, on Saraswati Puja on a number of occasions, which is kind of a prestigious uh, thing. So, you know, and I, I've performed in India with my band and also in classical concerts, and I do classical concerts quite regularly in Canada. So I, I have had almost no negative uh, reaction to it at all. Uh, yeah, and none from, from anyone from India. The cosmopolitan-ness uh, of Toronto certainly has been an influence on my musical career. Uh, also, the, the, the number of musicians I can meet and perform with, you know, from taiko drummers to, um, you know, classical harp players to 
you know, masters of, you know, African music or, you know, I played a concert with a group of Chinese musicians recently. And I think Toronto has the, the kind of the most diversity and we have a larger population. So I think that that, that is for sure a huge influence. But I also am a very urban person because of just because of the nature of my work. Uh, if I'm hopping around between things, I don't own a car. Um, I like being downtown. I like the city. I love the country, but I, I'm an urban person. <laughs>